high. That epigraph that just appeared was spoken by Willem Arondeas. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's entirely possible you've never heard of Willem Arondeas before. I can only speak from my experience, but I hadn't heard of him until last week. He was born on August 22nd, 1894 in the Netherlands. His father was a fuel trader, but as the youngest son, he decided to forge his own path and become an illustrator. He drew illustrations for poems from other authors, painted murals, and even designed posters. He would eventually switch from the visual arts to becoming an author himself. You may have been able to guess based on his birth date that dark times were coming to the Netherlands. I mean, the world was still in black and white. Everything was just a bit more depressing back then. But actually, not that far away in Germany, the rise of the Nazis was more than troubling. Willem, not content to be a shrinking violet, decided to fight against those forces of evil. He had organized an underground periodical, but you weren't expecting to hear that phrase today, and was very involved in the resistance movement. But it was him who realized the ulterior motives of the Nazi party by asking Jewish citizens to register themselves. This was not to protect them, which was the claim, but a quick way to get them sent to the nearest concentration camp. So this is what Willem did. He organized an underground system to hide Jewish people away from the authorities, a lot of times with fake documents. The Nazis uncovered that certain documents were faked and began to cross-reference them with the local registry, which is when Willem decided to bomb the public records office, destroying thousands of documents in the process process. Now this entire story would be remarkable just by itself. What makes it extraordinary to me is that Willem Arondeas was openly gay. He didn't hide the fact of his sexual orientation, and while same-sex activity was made legal in 1811 in the Netherlands, that's still a remarkable thing to do when the Nazi party has set its sights on you. And as you might have guessed, things didn't turn out all that well for Willem. The Nazi party eventually rounded up its usual suspects, Willem included. And on the 1st of July, 1943, Willem, along with 11 other members of the resistance, were executed by firing squad. In his last message before being shot to death, he said, let it be known that homosexuals are not cowards. This month is Pride Month. It's meant to celebrate the history of homosexual, transsexual, and other sexual identities that are often either not mentioned or entirely forgotten in popular media. It's also meant to honor the struggle of those who came before us, who fought for rights for themselves or for others. In Canada, at least, we have it pretty good. Same-sex activity was legalized in 1967, gay marriage was legalized in 2005, certain transgender rights were only recently enacted. Not that it's all sunshine and lollipops over here, gay men are still unable to donate blood, and as with other places, transgender rights are really a hot-button topic. But overall, there has been great progress in Canada, and we stand out in the Americas for our stance on LGBT plus all the other letters, rights. And I bring that up because when you are given rights and are able to fully live your life protected under the law, it can be easy to stand aside when others are not fully accepted. And I'm just as guilty of this as anyone else. It's entirely normal to be blind to transgender issues because that's not something that I ever have to worry about in my day to day. Or how race can sometimes be a problem even within the LGBT plus community. I am afforded many opportunities because I'm a white male and most things are made for me by other white males. But I can also feel that pinch of inequality. I'm not allowed to give blood if I am to be honest with blood services. The contributions of gay men and women are constantly erased in history, like Willem, who we mentioned before, or how only in the last couple decades has it been openly known that people like Oscar Wilde and Alan Turing were gay. Transgender men and women even more so are erased from history. Just look at the movie Stonewall, which glosses over the fact that trans people were very much involved in the formation of gay rights in the United States. Now, none of this is on the same level as not he's shooting you and 11 friends to death. I know that, but just because it's not as in your face doesn't make it any less necessary. These are some of Willem Arondeas' illustrations. To me, at least at first glance, they represent a belief in a happier future. Some even remind me of superheroes bathed in the blues of sky-high expectations. Willem Arondeas could have lived for a few more decades, but he didn't, and his life should be an example for us. Yes, we are all people, but people are still individuals, and individuals have intricacies and foibles and differences that we can celebrate. At a time when in America it was essentially illegal to be gay, a Dutch gay man stood up to the mustachioed madman, gave him the finger, and said, I can blow up things too. I consider his last words to be pretty badass. Let it be known that homosexuals are not cowards. Too true for a group of people that have been forced to be ostracized, chemically castrated, imprisoned, and even killed. Without these sacrifices, I wouldn't be able to state that sometimes I like to kiss guys. 
and during this month, we should be proud of their sacrifice. But what do you think? Did you know about Willem Arendeus? Do you know any other badass gay history? What do you want your last words to be? Mine, I hope, will be, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll talk again on Monday.